Hello and welcome back to Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, our first legit episode of 2024. <laughs> yeah. Before we get going, what are we drinking here? Uh, we're drinking Daniel O'Grady's Four Leaf Clover Stout. <laughs> From the Clover Patch. <laughs> you have to put it on his body. <laughs> <laughs> Burn in hell, you little green <laughs> bastard! If anyone's curious what we've been up to the last month or so, we got into the drinking a little too heavy <laughs> and decided to go out thrifting for VHS. Yeah, I found this at a thrift store and the, the guy wouldn't even haggle. You made a big scene. Yeah, I started throwing shit around. Cops got involved, Justin went on the run. I had to get a lawyer to try to bail us out of this whole thing. It was trouble. Big trouble. What I'd like to do today, Mr. John Stone, is get your version of what happened. You mean the truth? Of course. First, just state your name and your occupation for the record. Adam Johnstone, YouTuber. What kind of YouTube and where, please? Horror Movie Channel. Channel for Horror Movies. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Thank you. Now, before we get to the meat of this thing, do you at the present time have any knowledge of the whereabouts of a Mr. Justin Bush or his VCR? Oh God, would you leave him alone? Mr. Johnstone, please, you could be in a great deal of trouble here. Half the city's liquor stores have been cleared out and the thrift stores of their VHS. VHS! I mean, all hell is breaking loose. There's some people that say you're involved, that you may be responsible, that you're a very dangerous man. Now. If you're protecting Justin Bush... You leave Justin Bush alone! We are in his debt. He showed great courage, sitting through Exorcist Believer. Okay, but if I'm gonna be your attorney, there are a few things I have to know. Like, do you really believe in heavy drinking and watching old horror movies? Do you mean out-of-print horror VHS? Yes. Absolutely. Are you still serious about this? And Betamax and Laserdisc as well, I suppose. And heavy drinking. And I suppose you expect me to believe in heavy drinking as well. Of course. Why? Because it's real. How can I know that, Mr. Johnstone? How? Yes, how. Help me out here. Please. See? That was nothing, but that's how it always begins, very small. Yeah, this is Justin Bush with Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, and I'm reviewing for whoever's listening out there. Like I told my last fan, I said, buddy, I never review faster than I can see. Besides that, it's all in the reflexes. Needless to say, we cleared our names. Finally. Uh, by the way, how did the reviews go over CB radio? Thing wasn't even plugged in. So we're gonna kick off season eight with a retrospective of a part eight horror movie. It's only fitting. Yep. And there's not many part eights to really talk about. No. So we're gonna talk about 1989's Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> First, we're gonna kind of go back to the beginning. How did we get to part eight? How did we get to Manhattan? <laughs> yeah. It started out as a murder mystery. Low budget, you know, simple beginnings. Yeah, where you don't really know who the killer is. You always yeah. see the hands, right? And then there's a big twist at the end. We get to part two, which we're finally introduced to Jason. Mm -hmm. He's got the bag head scene going on. He's not wearing the hockey mask yet. But even that movie still kind of starts off as a bit of a mystery. Because you don't really know until later on in the movie that it is legit Jason. Yeah. It could be anybody. Then it gets to the third one. Then now it starts to get a little bit... Uh, Hokey. Yeah, you know, and he gets his mask finally. He gets his... His look. We get to part four, and this begins the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. Mm -hmm. In this one, Corey Feldman plays Tommy Jarvis, and it was legitimately actually supposed to be the final movie. You know, Jason gets killed with the machete through the face. Yeah. And at this point, Jason is more 
monster than man. <laughs> his he's, hands and yeah, all that. He's, he's now become a monster. He's no longer the hillbilly in the woods. Then we get to the fifth one, and it turns out that it's a copycat killer. It's not even Jason at all, which is a really cool twist. I like where they went with that. Part six is the return of Jason. Jason lives, and this is where we get introduced to zombie Jason. <laughs> he gets hit with a bolt of lightning, comes back to life, and now he's basically an unkillable zombie slasher. Part seven takes all that even further, and they also introduce a new character who has psychokinetic powers or whatever, and you can throw Jason around and do all this shit to him. Now we're in Jason Takes Manhattan mode here. <laughs> yeah. We're going to step back and take a look at it from afar and kind of see why it failed and also talk about what could have been because mm -hmm. this movie actually had a lot of potential. Yeah. And there were earlier drafts of the movie which was kind of the movie we all wanted to see but never got. <laughs> The movie starts off with like this sick monologue, this guy talking. You can't get the adrenaline pumping without the terror, good people. <laughs> I love this town. It's, like one, it's one of the weirdest <laughs> openings to a Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> what the fuck? So obviously he's talking about New York. Yeah. But then they take you right out of New York I right know, away. Yeah. Like, it's, like it starts in New York, you're like, oh yeah. And then you're on some fucking... Dog. Boat. Yeah. <laughs> and the anchor from the boat kind of latches onto this power cord, rips it, and then it electrifies Jason and brings him back to life. Again, with electricity. So <laughs> yeah. even there, this movie is unoriginal. It's already boring from part six. Yeah. Then we get kind of introduced to all the characters, and they get on a boat, and they're bound for New, New York. York. Jason just happens to hitch a ride. <laughs> I guess he needs a vacation or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jason basically starts killing all these kids on the ship, of course. One of the girls, Rennie, has these kind of visions of boyhood Jason, <laughs> kid Jason, drowning. And like, why is she seeing him? We never really find out. <laughs> the boat breaks down. And they all gotta get on a lifeboat. And they roll all the way <laughs> to New York City. And Jason... <laughs> follows them he swims there well did he swim or did he just walk on the ocean floor oh, he could have yeah <laughs> you don't see him swimming well, although there would have been funny he's all eh, 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 eh. <laughs> the two young guys doing all the rowing and that <laughs> shitty principal and just <laughs> with that steering thing yeah they make it to new york and they end up in the sewers somehow, where <laughs> toxic waste gets dumped every 24 hours or whatever, every night. And then Jason basically gets hit by this wall of toxic waste and all this lightning hits. And then he reverts back to Kid Jason. <laughs> and then I, I guess he dies? Yeah. I, I don't know. And, then, and that's the end of the movie. Like. <laughs> So why the movie failed is pretty blatant by the plot that we just described. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not good. Most of it takes place on the damn ship, and that's the movie's biggest problem, where Jason does not take Manhattan, he takes a cruise. Yeah. And he forgot it. his cabana wear. <laughs> yeah. Jason wearing one of those flowery yeah. shirts and everything, the sandals. Yes. <laughs> they should have went that way, man. It would have been better if he... <laughs> And fucking his cabana <laughs> shirt on and the hat yeah. and sandals. They should have went full bore in that <laughs> yeah. direction. This movie lacks character development. And good characters. Yeah, good characters too. They're all pretty damn lame. Rennie, who is supposed to have this psychic link with Jason, but they don't develop the character or the story enough to know why. You never find out why. Like, okay, yeah, when she was a young girl, she fell in the water and was kind of attacked by Kid Jason, which is just hanging out yeah. there. But that doesn't explain why she's always seeing him as a kid. Yeah. Well, why? I don't get that. I think what they were maybe trying to get at was they were trying to continue that psychic shit from the seventh movie. Yeah. They didn't want to continue, like, that whole character, right? Yeah. So they wanted to keep pieces of it. Well, why would you do that? The kills in this movie fucking suck. Mm -hmm. There's only one good kill, and it's the most famous kill that a lot of people talk about is the rooftop boxing match. <laughs> yeah. Take your best shot. <laughs> Which is a fantastic kill, but it doesn't make up for the rest of 
the shitty kills. Yeah. And again, a lot of that was censoring. They were forced to cut out a lot of that stuff. But even then, if they would have kept it in, I still don't think it would have been that strong. No. A kills, you no. know. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a strong movie to begin with, so. Yeah. That principal guy, that Charles, when he gets put upside down in that barrel of toxic waste yeah. and all that shit. I just wish he would have went the extra step, like the Toxic Avenger, when he starts punching his nuts, <laughs> yeah. like, into the barrel. <laughs> well, it would have been cool, too. Punch his nuts in and all that, but then pull him out and show what he looks like yeah, after he's, he's all, all melted. melted. Yeah, like, and Jason kind of sucks in this movie too. Like at this point, we're almost kind of desensitized from Jason. Mm. He's no longer scary because we've seen him too much. He's not kind of entertaining and funny the way that Freddy became. So yeah. he's kind of like just blah. He's just wooden and kind of like, uh, I don't really, you don't care for Jason. You don't root for Jason. And you also don't root for the kids either. No, because you don't care about yeah. any of them because they didn't take the time to develop anything. So you're not really rooting for any one character in this. And you know, Jason's probably at his lamest here, <laughs> I think. This movie lacks a serious purpose as to what he's doing and why. You know, with the previous movies, you kind of, okay, he's killing camp counselors. Yeah. There's a reason for that. And that's acceptable. The counselors killed his mom. Yeah. Know, that's all you that's all you need. Yeah. And in this movie, he just hops a ship for no reason. Yeah. And he just starts killing the kids. Okay, you need something. You yeah. need a purpose there. Yeah. To yeah. drive this story along. I guess really maybe you can reach a little bit and say that he wants to kill Rennie because he wasn't able to kill her back in the day, you know, when they were both kids. Yeah. yeah you know, it's, so I gotta get her now, because I didn't get her before. Like, uh, that's that's the only reason I can think of. And a lot of things in this movie just don't really add up or make sense. Like, the whole, you know, visions of Jason as a kid, we talked about that. This grad taking place on this cruise ship, like, <laughs> what, there's ten people in this graduating class? Like, I know there's small town classes and stuff like that, but a whole cruise ship for a yeah. class of 10 kids? <laughs> that janitor guy, like, yeah. this voyage is doomed. <laughs> yeah. Well then get off the fucking boat if you think it's doomed. Yeah, Why yeah, are you he here? He hangs around still, like, I think the kids can clean up after themselves. <laughs> get the fuck off the ship. <laughs> and the music in this movie, man, it's really lacking. Like, besides some of the rock and roll music that's in there, that's kind of cool 80s music, but the score itself, it's not done by Harry Manfredini, mm -hmm. and it shows. It's just a boring, shitty score, and it doesn't s sound like a Friday the 13th movie. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like one either. General atmosphere. There isn't one. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels so bland and boring. That's all the reasons why this movie failed, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, it also failed at the box office. It was one of the worst performing, if, if not the worst performing, Friday the 13th movie of all time. A lot of competition at the box office too. It was basically sequel central. It was the summer of the sequels. It was competing with Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Yeah, Halloween 5. Fright Night 2. Yeah. So it's like all these, you know, sequels in the theaters at once. It was probably you know, like, horror movie sequel burnout <laughs> at this point, right? Yeah, how many can you fucking watch and stand? Yeah, yeah. You know? And I think that has a lot to do with why uh, the movie failed in the box office, was I think it was the end of an era, right? It was 89, you know? Slashers were going hard for a good fucking, like, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like running out of steam. At least with the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, they took Freddy into a funner direction. He became yeah. fun and exciting at least. Even though we don't like that version <laughs> of Freddy, at least there's entertainment value with that, mm -hmm. right? You know, at least with Freddy, they were always kind of developing his character and his backstory. You kind of learn more about him mm -hmm. in every movie. Even though those movies suck, you're still at least... You know, they're building that character. Yeah. In this, they're not building nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. Taking Jason to Manhattan was a big deal and should have been a big deal. It's like this first time that he left Camp Crystal Lake, people were excited to see him fucking yeah. take Manhattan. And he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't do any of that. <laughs> yeah. 
So let's talk about what this movie should have been then, because he was actually supposed to take Manhattan properly. <laughs> yeah. Originally, there were a couple of drafts kicking around for part eight that was a direct continuation of part seven. Mm-hmm, with the female character, right? With the powers and all that. The execs signed off on this Jason taking Manhattan. It's a great idea, let's do it. You know, and he was supposed to be in Manhattan for most of the movie, not an eighth of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was supposed to do all sorts of cool things. He was supposed to, that the boxing match on the rooftop was actually supposed to take place in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> yeah. How they would have done that, yeah. would have gotten there, I don't yeah. know, but it would have been cool. There were supposed to be scenes shot on the Brooklyn Bridge. That yeah. would have been cool. Like him, I guess, walking across yeah. it or maybe on the way up high on the spire. Yeah, that would have been great. Or, yeah. He was supposed to like scale the Statue of Liberty somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, like that's a great image. Yeah. Why again? Yeah. I don't know. No. How they would have connected all yeah. this shit, I don't know. He's supposed to be like going on killing sprees through department stores and in Times Square. Like that's what we all wanted to see. Yeah. But the studio cut the budget on this movie big time. <laughs> Simply, they couldn't afford to film in all those locations. Mm -hmm. So they filmed it in Vancouver, Canada instead. <laughs> Most of it, all the stuff on the boat, on the dock, all that shit was in Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's not really Jason Takes Manhattan, it's Jason Takes a Cruise in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. When they finally arrive, at what you think is New York, it's I mean, it's supposed to be New York, they spend most of their time in the back alleys and all that shit, fighting thugs and all that too. Yeah. It's fluff, all this shit. Yeah, it's not the parts of New York that you really want to see. No, it's like, I don't, this could be anywhere. Yeah, there's a cool shot of him in Times Square. And that's about it, you know? That's like, that's the only defining New York uh, setting mm -hmm. in the movie. And it, it's, a mi in less than a minute, yeah. you know? At face value, looks like it should be tons of fun. Like, look at the, 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 the marketing campaign behind this. Like, just the movie cover alone is yeah. fantastic. I remember this always being the cover at the movie stores. Like, that's the one I want to rent, because it looks so cool. Yeah. But then you get it. <laughs> Not so much. But I do remember... When this came out, when this was a new release in the video stores, and uh, we actually went and visited my grandma in Vancouver, no less. Um, and it was funny at the time, she didn't have a VCR. VCRs were expensive. They yeah. were fucking pricey. They were, you know, four or five hundred bucks for like a run of the mill VCR. So she didn't have one. So when we went to the movie store, I saw this on the shelf and I was like, Holy shit! You know, I was like four or five years old. I was like, oh, whoa, we gotta get this. He's gonna be in Manhattan. Yeah, it's like, whoa. So we rented this, and then mom was like, oh, well, we don't have a VCR. <laughs> we had to rent the VCR from the movie store. Yeah, I remember doing that. I remember <laughs> having to do that too, you know? Before we got a VCR, my mom renting the VCR and the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like. Oh boy, back in the day. So it, yeah, there was hype behind this movie and it, you know, it, it, that's what happened when you have a great idea, great marketing campaign, and the product doesn't live up to it <laughs> at all. Yeah, and word spreads and movie tanks, yeah, right? Yeah, and I think it was the combination of all those things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, word probably spread, Jason doesn't take Manhattan. Audience is probably burned out from slashers at this point anyways. Mm -hmm. The competition at the box office, all that stuff, yeah. man. The studio not supporting it, yeah. that's the biggest thing. Yeah. If they would've just put the extra money in, yeah. I think they would've seen a re very good return on it. Yeah, because the idea is fine. Mm -hmm. It's the delivery, yeah. you know? So that's just our thoughts on Jason Takes Manhattan. I know there are some people out there that actually like it. <laughs> yeah. And if you do, let us know. If you don't, let us know too. <laughs> We'd like to hear other people's thoughts on, on this movie because I think it is a little, you know, it's... Put it this way, out of all of the Friday the 13th movies that I'd put into the VCR, it would not be this one. Right, yeah. I'd put them all in first before this. Yeah, and that includes Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Ta Jason Goes to Hell is a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, Jason X, maybe, yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Those are our thoughts, and until next time, 
keep drinking. <laughs>